I ruffled some feathers in my last video. There were a couple people who commented and they took issue with what I had done, my methodology. Uh, now, what, what did I do? What was my last video about? So if you haven't seen it, go back, check it out. I'll link to it. There's a card here somewhere and I'll put a link in the description box. But basically, I made a video about the recent change that I made here in my theater. Now, I currently have on loan from Trinov the Trinov Altitude 16 processor and the Trinov Amplitude 16 amplifier. And that is the setup. That's the, the guts, the brains behind my 9.2.4 Dolby Atmos theater. Previously, I was running all 13 of my bed layer and height channel speakers off of the Amplitude 16 amplifier. And what I decided to do was switch the LCRs from instead of being amplified by the Amplitude 16, I was going to connect those to my unused Crown amplifiers. Now, my Crown amplifiers, I have the Crown XLS 1002 and the Crown XLS 202. And I have three of them. So two 1002s one, and one 202. Sorry, it's way confusing. But basically, I decided to bridge each one of those three amplifiers because each one is a two channel amplifier. So I bridged them and sent all of the power, all of the juice to a single speaker. So one bridged crown amp per LCR on my front soundstage. And I did that and then I recalibrated everything with the help of Chuck at Trinoff. And once I got everything calibrated, it sounded amazing. Like it really did fill out that front soundstage. Now here in my theater, cause a lot of, pe some people commented, they're like, why don't you just turn the volume up? You know, um, well, here's the thing. First of all, I wanted to send more juice, more, have more headroom at my LCR so that turning it up wouldn't strain the speakers or the amplifier. The second thing is in my room, this goes back to something I've discussed previously, the mistakes made when I built this theater. If I had it to do over again, I would rearrange the room, but it is what it is now. And so the, the issue is, is that I'm sitting back quite a ways from the screen. So all of my sides, wides, rears, my height channels, those are all really close to me. And then my LCRs are extended out quite a ways in front of me. So they're disproportionately further away than all of my other speakers. And so I want to really fill out those LCRs and make those more powerful, more impactful so that the sound is getting to me when it, when it gets to me, it still has a lot of punch to it. Right? So that's, that's some context that I didn't include in my previous video. Okay. So this is, this is what I did. I switched over to bridge the, the LCRs to those three crown amps and it made a big difference. And some people were like, ah, that's just placebo effect. You're just imagining it. And then other people got really, uh, how should I put this? They're very passionate. They were very passionate in their position that instead of using bridged crown amps for my LCRs, I should have used the bridge functionality in the Amplitude 16. Now the Amplitude 16 is a 16 channel amplifier and it has the capability to bridge every two amps. So essentially, if you bridged all of them, it would go from a 16 channel amplifier to an eight channel amplifier, and every channel would be bridged across two amps, right? So thus increasing the amount of wattage. So unbridged, it's rated at 200 watts per channel, but bridged at eight ohms. But bridged, the, the amplifier is rated at 800 watts, at eight ohms. And this, this was something that was pointed out to me in the comments uh, on my previous video. They said, why would you bridge, use bridged crown amps that are putting out 600 to 700 watts uh, bridged when you could just use the bridged function in the Amplitude 16 and get 800 watts? So here's what I've done. <laughs> so I took, I took that that advice. And I was like, you know what? I actually want to test that. I want to see how do my LCRs perform when all three of them are bridged on, on the Amplitude 16. So I did that. I tested it. Now I'm not, I'm not going to get yet to what my, my impression of that was. I'll, I'll save that for later. In the meantime, I'm going to show you a head to head comparison between the bridged LCRs 
on the Amplitude 16 versus the bridged amp uh, LCRs on the Crown XLS202 and the Crown XLS1002. Try to keep all this straight in your head. It's 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 a mess. It's a mess. Here's what I found. And and I saw this when I did the initial calibration. After I switched to the Crown the Crown amps initially for the first time, when we did the calibration, we saw that the, the levels were way different. The, the, the LCRs, when it played the test tone, the LCRs were significantly higher volume than my sides, wides, and surrounds. So this time around, what I've done today is I have done a head-to-head -head comparison and I've captured it on video so that you, the viewer, can see what I was seeing. So it's not just what I'm hearing, it's not what I think I'm hearing, this is actually what is being measured by the Trinov microphone at the main listening position. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the video of the LCRs connected to the Crown amps, okay? So I've got them connected. Now, I start the calibration process so that it plays the test tones, and then I switch over to the uh, meters tab so that I can see the dB level. Now you can see right there, it's right at about 85. Those, those uh, peak markers are right at about 85 dB, right? That's for the LCRs. Now we're going to switch over. I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit to where, and, and it's like that for all three LCRs. It's right at about 85 dB, that's the volume level. Now, when you get to the sides, now you can see it drops down to about 70 dB. So we're looking at a, like a 12 to 15 dB difference between the LCRs and the, and the wides. Now, when we ran this, this calibration initially uh, with, with Chuck, Chuck noticed that and he was like, oh, that's, that's a wide disparity. So what we need to do is we need to decrease the power, the dB level on the LCRs, and then bump up the overall volume so that we can get those two volumes a little closer together. So this is what we did. He went over to the uh, setup tab, go to the active crossover tab. And once you're on the active crossover tab, now you can see that on the center channel down in the lower right hand corner, you can see where it says level and it was at zero. So what Chuck did is he bumped that down 6 dB. Now, when I, when I did this, I started making the change to the left surround, and then I, I noticed my mistake. So I, I went to the right surround, I made sure it was at zero, left surround, made sure it was at zero, center channel, negative 6 dB. And then I went, I scrolled over to the left and right channels, and I went to the right channel, and then I bumped it down 6 dB. And then I went over to the left channel and the left channel, I bumped that down, negative six dB. So now I'm, I'm lowering the volume, the overall volume for the LCRs, just the LCRs. Then I hit apply. And now I go back to the calibration and then I hit calibrate. We run it again. And then you'll notice that the level because the level of the LCRs was at about 85 dB. And now you can see it's dropped down to about 80 dB, which makes sense that it's going to see like a five to six dB drop because I adjusted those down, right? And then once we get to the uh, wides, when it goes to the wide wide channels, those were untouched. So those are at the, at, at the same level. So what I do then is I bump the master volume up 6 dB. So it was at negative 33, then I bump it up to uh, negative 27, negative 26. I, I basically uh, eliminate that or bump it up as much as I brought the LCRs down. And then I go back and then I run the test tone again. And you can see I, it was a little bit hot. So I, I bumped it down to negative 27, which brought the, the volume down right around where you want it, right at, at uh, 85 dB for the LCRs. And then when we get to the wides, then they're jumped up about 6 dB, which makes sense because we've 
adjusted the master volume up 6 dB. So now the wides and the sides and surrounds are at about, they're about 80, a little slightly below 80. So, so now we've, we've gotten the, the volume discrepancy down to about 5 dB. Before there was about 12 to 13, 15 dB difference. And now by making that adjustment to the LCRs, we've gotten the, the volume disparity down to about 7 dB difference, right? Okay, so now that's a point where then you could then run the calibration and it would be, it would be solid. So that was for the bridged crown amps. Now, what does it look like if I connect the LCRs to the bridged Trinov amp, which is what people in my comments were suggesting in my last video? Let's take a look and see what the volume level looks like with that scenario. So the first thing I did is obviously I switched the cables. <laughs> I had to rewire everything. Uh, and then I, once I got it all rewired, then I had to go back in and to the settings and I see where it's all at, it's at negative six dB. It's been adjusted down six dB. Now look at where the level is at. Look at where the level is at. This is this is apples to apples. This is apples to apples comparison. The with the bridged crown amps, the dB volume was at about 85. And now with bridged connections on the Trinov amp, the the dB level is a, just a few dB above 70. So it's about 12 dB difference between the bridged crown amp and then the bridged Trinov amp, which is, you know, people might not like that, or maybe I'm missing something. If I'm missing something, definitely hit me in the comments. Uh, but here's the thing, that is significant. That is significant. Uh, that's not just me imagining it. That's not me, that's not placebo effect. That's not me just saying, oh, I, I made a change, so it must be better, right? No, that's a measurable difference apples to apples with with uh, with the crown amp bridged and I run the calibration it's hitting at about 85 DB and then with the bridge Trinov amp no other change made all it's done is just switched over same settings same everything the, and this is with the LCRs adjusted down 6 DB so the crown with the crown it's adjusted 6 DB down and with the Trinov it's adjusted 6 DB down and at a volume of negative 27, a master volume set of negative 27. And then you get the LCRs hitting at about 73 dB. Like that, that is a difference. I, I'm not, I'm not just imagining it. Now, now here's the thing. Here's the thing. After I made the video and I got the comments and I got to thinking, I'm like, oh, maybe, maybe I could have just done what they said and just connected up to the, the bridge connections on the Trinov and, and it would have been just as good, right? So I made that switch. I did a bunch of A-B testing and I was like, I still like the crown configuration better. I just prefer it with the with the crowns connected to my LCRs. And, and you know, I slept on it and I thought, you know, maybe it really is placebo effect. Maybe I'm just imagining it. I mean, it's not a huge difference, but there is a difference. And so I decided to, to do this, to, to not just rely on my ear, but to actually do an apples to apples comparison and actually collect data from the Trinov microphone. And I mean, you can see, you can see there is actually a difference. Now I know that the, the bridged connection on the Trinov is rated at 800 watts and the bridge connection on the crown amps is rated at 600 watts for one model and 700 watts for the other model. So on paper, there is a, a wattage advantage to the Trinov. But when when the rubber meets the road, when, when I am running it here in my theater, the edge goes to the crown. Now here's, here's the bottom line. Here's the bottom line. I'm in this situation because I just happen to have some unused crown amps. And so why not use them, right? Like, of course, use them. But if you're in a situation where you have the Trinov Amplitude 16 amplifier, and you, and you're thinking, oh, do I need to go purchase Crown amps to to get a better sound? I would say no. I would say no. There is a difference, 
but it's not worth the extra expense of buying the additional crown amplifiers. Just bridge the, the connections on the Amplitude 16, connect those to your LCRs, and you are gonna be golden. Like honestly, running a 13 speaker setup on that 16 channel amplifier, the Amplitude 16, with, with the three LCRs bridged, so you're using essentially 100% of the amplifier, that is a sweet setup. I mean, it is fantastic. I, I can't say enough good about it. It sounds awesome. And so I, I recommend that setup. But if you're in a situation like me, where you just happen to have three crown amps laying around and you're not using them, absolutely. Go ahead, bridge them, connect them up to your LCRs, and, and you're going to be even better off. So that's the bottom line. I don't know. I don't know if this will help anybody feel any better. <laughs> I don't know if it'll do any good to, to uh, you know, put any minds at ease or, or uh, you know, maybe explain further, uh, you know, what I did or what I was explaining in my previous video. But for me, the experiment was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing this. I'm kind of weird. I like reconfiguring stuff. I like trying different configurations. I like rewiring things. I like disconnecting some equipment and reconnecting other equipment. And just, I enjoy the whole process. So it was a very, very fun experiment for me. It was cool to uh, collect the data and uh, share it with you guys. Thanks for watching.